What's good, friends and family? Been a little minute. I've been caught up with life. So I know guys sometimes say, hey, man, I need you to get these videos out. You guys got to understand, I have life. I have my kids. I have a lot going on. So I try to do the videos as much as I can. And also, I took my own 90-day challenge, and I'm in the process of getting back in shape. So I'm back in the gym, so a lot of stuff going on. All right, so Columbia. Yes. Mr. Flip Flop took himself to Columbia. I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown. Lots of video, lots of uh, photos, not a lot of videos. Um, I have a couple stories to tell about it. First, let's start with the worst travel day of my life. It, hands down, was the worst. Let me fix this right now. Now, people go, well, why was it the worst? All right, so let's get started. So I'm scheduled to fly to San Diego, uh, Copa Airlines, going to Panama and then Panama to Medellin. I went to Medellin, Colombia. First, I get to the airport two hours early. Now, myself, I like going to the airport four hours early or five hours early because I had a couple instances where me just going early, something happened, and I was able to leave and come back and make my flight. That's just me. I don't like wasting time. I don't believe in missing flights. I'm kind of a, you know, my, like I said, I got OCD, so I'm kind of stuff like that. Missing flights and being just on time to flights doesn't work for me. So I'm two hours, which is not late, but I wanted to be earlier. No problem. Appreciate my boy K gave me a ride to the airport. So I get there. I check in the Copa. No problems. Uh, besides, they said I was on standby for my second flight, which was confusing. But when we realized it was standby, meaning I didn't book my uh, seat, I didn't reserve my seat. So it said standby, but it wasn't standby, whatever. <clears throat> that was a little confusing. So I check in at Copa. Then I noticed there's this huge line outside to go into the airport, to go into customs. So you know, I'm, you know me, I'm like, well, what the hell's going on? So I'm walking around trying to see what's going on. And the custom system in San Diego Airport was down for three hours. So there's thousands of people standing outside because you can't get in. Now, like I said, had I been there four hours earlier, I would have missed this mayhem, this chaos. But I got there two hours early, so I was stuck right in the mayhem. And I mean, when I say thousands of people, you'll see some pics. It was a few thousand people. So, uh, the line actually starts moving after a while. I, I was there, I think, for about an hour before it started moving. So it starts moving. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people. And if you guys know, know, know me, I mean, growing up, you know, not saying I'm, I'm Mr. VIP, but I never waited on lines. I was in all the clubs, all the shows, all the stuff. I don't like waiting on lines. <laughs> I don't have a lot of patience wait for, for lines. I've actually left places because the line was too long and I wasn't waiting. So now we had this long line. Uh, like I said, thousands of people, probably a minimum 2,000 people, all trying to get in the airport. I happened to, I needed some paperwork, so someone gave me a pen. And I happened to see a fellow American. I, I apologize, I forgot his name. But I said, hey, brother, I'm, I, was, I knew some people up in front. They weren't going to let me in, but when I had to go sign the paper, uh, you know, fill those customers' papers out, they left. So he let me in with him. We slid on through, but I had to go to a special line, which to pay the uh, overstay fee. I owed some money. I'd been here for a little while, so I go. I go to that line. Now that line is terrible. It's like two Americans on the line, all Dominicans and I believe Venezuelans, and they're paying with credit cards. And this line is taking forever. So we finally get through, and now they're telling everybody they're going to hold the planes because it was not any of the passengers' faults. It was the fault of the airport. I'm going, taking my, taking my shoes off to get checked. Guy runs up, he goes, hey man, the plane's waiting for you. So he grabs my stuff, throws it through, I come on through, he rushes me to the plane. I'm literally the last person on the plane. Now, the flight was supposed to leave at 3.55. After all that mayhem, we only left 15 minutes late. So that was kind of cool. Uh, got on the plane, got seated. Uh, then we headed to Panama, right? Now. Shout outs to uh, Copa Airlines, real quick. I got a big shout, and I'll tell you why. Take a look at some of these pictures from um, the airport, and I'll tell you why we're going to shout out Copa Airlines.
So we're on the plane, and they come through with the cart. You know, they offer empanadas. I get me a chicken empanada. It was actually very good. At that shout to Copa. Uh, then I say, you know, give me, I give me a sprite, and I say, hey, do you guys take cash for the liquor? Because I would like some alcohol, but I don't have my credit card on. He goes, uh, liquor's free. <laughs> I go, well, give me a vodka and ice, please. And what vodka do they have? Smirnoff. For those that know me, my first drink ever was Smirnoff. I love Smirnoff vodka. Of course, I drink Grey Goose. I drink Absolute. I drink Tito's. But I love Smirnoff vodka. And so whenever I get a chance to get it, I drink it. I know it's not a favorite for most people, but it brings me back to when I was younger. So he's got Smirnoff on ice. I'm cool. Plane's going. Another thing you guys need to know, and you should notice by now, when you travel, bring a pen. I forgot my pen, and it was so hard filling out all this paperwork they asked you for. And I was like, good Lord. Anyway, so flight's going. Flight, very good flight. About a two-hour flight. A uh, guy comes back. I said, hey, man, can I get another uh, one of those vodkas and ice? He's like, hey, no problem. Brings another one, free. I'm like, whoa. Too many vodkas and ice. I'll be straight. I'll be happy. 40 minutes before we land, they made the announcement. He goes, would you like another one before we land? Certainly. <laughs> so shout to Cobra. They, they're real. They're very good customer service. Um, flight was excellent. Land in Panama. Now, my, my connecting flight was the other side of the airport. Panama Airport is kind of cool. It's kind of like a mall. First time there. Uh, you can pretty much buy anything you want. So I get to the other side of the airport. Plane's still there. They're just boarding. Actually, just started boarding when I got there. Get on, get my seat. Uh, now we're going to Medellin. And as I said, this was one of the worst travel days of my life because there was a lot of stuff that happened, a lot of waiting. Uh, first it was in Santiago. And now once we land in Medellin, same thing, uh, getting Copa, food, drink. Copa's very, very, I give two thumbs up for Copa. Um, food, drink, then we land. But when we get there, uh, that week was the Flower Festival in Colombia, in Medellin, excuse me. Um, I don't know if it was that or the, it was a nighttime flight. A lot of flights landed at the same time. There had to be a few thousand people in customs. It was ridiculous. So I'm hot. I'm tired. I'm ready to call it a night. I just want to get out of this airport. Taxi driver's outside waiting. I'm like, listen, man, it's going to be a while. It takes almost two hours to get through Columbia Customs. Then we got to get our bag, which is another line. Because it was that many people. It was so many people. Had to, it was a line to get your bag. And then another line to go through the last door. So the guy writes something on my passport. I don't know. I guess he wrote down, I'm a bully. He spoke to Bo Rakes. Who knows? I get to the lady. She goes, special inspection. I was like, it couldn't get no worse than this. Because I'm, I'm in the customs line sweating to death. And now I've got to go through special inspection. Whatever the hell that was. Throw my bag in a special inspection. I have my book bag on, so I forget I have my book bag on because I'm aggravated. Very aggravated. I get aggravated real quick. He goes, hey, man, your book bag. So I'm cursing up a storm. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Throw the book bag in there. They're all looking at me because they're like, who is this guy? I get out of there, uh, get to the, get to the um, taxi, breathe the fresh air. I'm good to go. It was an amazing ride. Um... Medellin is in, in the bottom of a mountain, so it's beautiful city, beautiful air. Um, I'll give you guys some more pictures and some more insight. So, it's almost 11 o'clock, headed down to the apartment. A friend of mine's already here. We got a two-bedroom. I get in. Like I said, beautiful scenery. I mean, it was utterly amazing. Everything's downhill. It's crazy. Um, get to the apartment, shower, change, hit the streets. Uh, area called Parque Yeres. That's kind of where everybody hangs out in Medellin, I guess. Uh, hit a spot called Chica Boom, which was awesome. Not too great with the, with the mixed drinks. I wanted a mojito, then I wanted Long Island. They, they were terrible. I had a couple mojitos later on in another plot, spot. They were terrible. I guess they don't really do mixed drinks. So I just stuck with kind of Corona and vodka and lemon the whole trip. Uh, out and about, my boys are showing me the sights, you know, stuff that everybody talks about, different bars, different, uh, different spots. 
and this was kind of a recon mission because I'm going back in February and I'm doing things the way I do things. As you guys know, I travel the entire Dominican Republic by myself, sometimes with a friend here and there. But when I go back now, uh, I believe my cousin may come. But when I go back now in February, I'm going dolo as, as planned. Some guys may come down, some guys may not. But I'm going on my own mission and my own itinerary. So this was more recon to just get an idea of the city, of the people, and uh, my, my, uh, my views and my versions of what I saw down there. So overall, the city was beautiful. Um, I hit a bunch of clubs, a bunch of different spots, a bunch of different bars. Uh, I know people say, what about the women, man? What about the women? Yes, the women are beautiful. I mean, there are beautiful women everywhere. I get, I get people into the argument, where are the women more beautiful? In Dominican Republic or Colombia? It's really your choice. It's really up to you. I mean, in America, you know, I've been in places with women who's gorgeous. So you can't say where someone looks better. It all depends on your taste. Uh, I won't get, excuse me, I won't get with the, the thing that says, oh, Colombian women look better and Dominican women look better. I don't know. It's really your taste. Uh, the women were very friendly. The men were very friendly and respectful. I did find that a lot, of, they don't really deal with tourism down there. That's not a real tourism area. Like the area I was in was mostly tourist, but they're not really into tourism like that. I guess they don't depend on it. I guess having some of the biggest narcos of all time, you don't need tourists. So some people were kind of looking at me funny when I spoke Spanish. It was weird. Uh, they were kind of like, well, tourists usually don't come down here speaking Spanish. What are you about? So it was cool. Um, everybody was friendly. Um, certain people were just all business, so I kind of, kind of turned me off. Like, went to one club and they kind of got us for drinks because I thought they were drinking from our liquor and they were drinking from other liquor. So stuff like that that I usually watch for out here, but I guess I was too relaxed. You know, no big deal. It happens. You live and learn. Um, and you know, most of the girls at these clubs get paid for you to drink, so they get the high price stuff. So it is what it is. Uh, for the most part, my synopsis of the country, I, with the part that I've seen, excuse me, I can't talk about an entire country, but uh, I enjoyed it. I am going back. That was a straight recon mission. The weather was beautiful. I walked around a lot. Um, hit, very hilly, if you, if you walk. Very hilly. My calves were burning. Um, beautiful people, beautiful city. Um, decent restaurants. I only ate at a few places. Uh, my boy liked to cook, so most of the best food I actually had was what he cooked in the crib. Um, and, you know, we partied and had, had a good time, you know, and hung out amongst fellas and just, you know, not that many guys down there, but we, you know, bumped into a few guys from the Dominican Republic and just hung out. So overall, the trip was good. As I said, this was more of a recon, so I wasn't really with my camera everywhere because I was with my eyes everywhere trying to see things for myself. So when I go back, uh, my next trip will be Medellin, Cartagena, and back to Medellin. That's in February. Uh, later at the Super Bowl. So, you know, I got, I got another video coming up, but it's a Sue updates. But right now, this is all about Colombia. I enjoy Colombia. I will be going back. And uh, that's my synopsis. I mean, I enjoyed it. Uh, there's a couple things here and there that I I didn't like, but it's not really to speak on. Because when I go back, I'm going to see if I like it for sure. And I'll give you guys more info from that. It's a flip flop. I'm What's the norm? What's a good tip? Buildings, high rises, all types of American stuff out here. This city is infrastructure is crazy. Beautiful city. This is awesome city. Feels like it feels kind of like being in New York. It's a beautiful man. It's pouring out here in Medellin, but it's beautiful. It is freaking pouring. Lots of rain, but a beautiful city. City surrounded by a mountain. 